Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about choosing the right NAS for you. Chances are if you found this video you've been doing some googling and you've been thinking about buying the brand new DS420 Plus from Synology or you've been thinking about buying the DS920 Plus both of which have been released within a very short period of time of one another and both of which are from Synology's own range of disk station solutions. They seem very, very similar in a lot of ways apart from the price tag. There seems to be about 100 quid between them. 100, 120 if you shop around. And why the price difference? Why exactly is the 920 Plus that much more expensive? Because on the face of it, they seem pretty similar. And by on the face of it, I literally mean look at them they look near enough identical. You would have difficulty pick these, picking these two out of a lineup. What I'm saying is that a number of you are wondering, first and foremost, is the 920 worth that extra bit of money being plumped on top of your spend? And two, when choosing between them, do you even need that extra if indeed there is? And if you're bouncing between, you've already allocated a budget to this project and you've largely decided that it's Synology you're going to go for. Maybe it's because of their DSM software. Maybe it's because of the apps. Maybe it's because of Plex performance or surveillance. So we're not really going to talk that much about software today. Maybe from a distance. And you have to think in terms of breadth rather than depth with between these two because they'll run pretty much the same apps but it's worth saying straight away that the 920 will run more simultaneous instances of an application or individual user environments at exactly the same time with their own unique login than the 420 that's what i mean by breadth versus depth it's about the device being able to do more things at once now let's look at where that money has gone what do you get for the extra spend between these two devices they have their very own cpu the same product same family um uh, uh, gemini lake between them but a different particular kind of processor so in the case of the ds920 it's the j4125 it's a quad core processor 2.0 gigahertz that could be clocked up to 2.7 gigahertz aes ni level encryption um, 4K transcoding there. Uh, it's got a floating point there for those multi-users, multi-app environments, and supports DDR4 memory. And that is arriving with 4 gig of DDR4 2666 megahertz memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig, the recommended manufacturer and CPU maximum. In the case of the 420, however, it is a dual core processor, same family, but the J4025. Again, transcodes very, very well. It has the AI encryption, it's got 4K and 1080p, it's got that floating point, it supports DDR4 memory. But this device arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 6 gig, weirdly for some strange reason, but it can be upgraded to six gig rather than eight gig. You can't go higher than that. The two gig is soldered onto the motherboard and there's only one available sodium slot. You can go higher than that with unofficial crucial memory that is not recommended by many people, certainly not by Synology, it'll invalidate your warranty. On the subject of warranty, both of these devices arrive with three years of manufacturer's warranty that can be expand, uh, extended to five total years with an additional two year license bumped on top. So there's no difference between them in terms of the warranty coverage, but the CPU distinction between them is actually quite large. Not just in terms of the CPU benchmark being much, much higher. I think it's 1800 versus 3000 um, between these two devices, but also just the sheer depth of processes and that additional memory uh, between them, which is a bit naughty really of Synology if you ask me, because that CPU and that CPU both support eight gig maximum. It's only a physical limitation on the 420. Now, both of them have got NVMe SSD caching bays built into the base of the device. Both of them have got those two slots there, which means SSD caching with NVMe SSDs is on the table. The same PCIe thread is as well inside. So the CPU and memory, is that really the only difference between them? Well, it's not. If you look at the rear of the devices, there is one extra tiny little extra between them. And that is to do with this red port here on the base. That port is eSATA. That means that this device can be expanded by an additional five bays with a DX517. Yes, it's an additional purchase of around 400 NICA, and you've got to put all the hard drives in it, and the RAID, because it's a JBOD box, will be handled by the NAS, but it has that expandability. It lets you add 
that two gig of extra RAM over this one, which again is negligible, but the CPU inside, I do think makes it a worthy successor, um, or at least in terms of your view as a buyer between these two, and the upgradability of that eSATA port adding more storage later down the line can't really be overlooked. But apart from those, there's not a huge amount of difference between them. As mentioned, the performance of the software between these two, you will get more cameras. You'll be able to do more VMs. It's a four core versus a two core. You'll be able to have more transcoding instances because with transcoding, memory is a factor as well as the CPU as well. If you're running multiple users at once with Sonality Chat, Mail, Drive, Calendar, and, and, and more, all of those apps, they will run that little bit better on this. Now, if you're only a handful of users, one to five users, you're not gonna feel those differences because you're not gonna push the device really enough to warrant the extra bells and whistles. But it's if you're running intense operations or if there's lots of users like a business environment, that's when having the elasticity, the breadth open to you will be advantageous. And that's where the extra spend goes. It's just a question of whether you're going to use the breadth and the depth of these devices to their fullest potential. I hope this video has helped you. I've tried to keep it short this time because you know about these devices already and this doesn't have to be like my other comparisons. If you think of anything else or you know reasons of distinction between these two that I have not covered that I don't know about, please do let me know. But otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more and I'll see you next time.